minutes. It's the weekly My Amazon Guy live q and I'm Jason Master Mateo.
Five more minutes and we'll be live on the My Amazon Guy live Q&A with Jason Master Mateo weekly Fridays at 12 Eastern. be live in one minute. That's right. In just 60 short seconds, you'll be able to ask any Amazon question that your heart has ever sought the answer to.
happy friday good morning everyone good morning or afternoon oh, now the questions are coming in yeah <laughs> you're just waiting to see us to make sure we're actually going to be here <clears throat> Um, hi everybody. Uh, as Faith mentioned, happy Friday. Yes. This is the My Amazon Guy live Q&A every Friday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Uh, my name is Jason Master Mateo and she is? I am also Jason Master Mateo. Isn't that crazy? No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Faith Deniston. I am a senior brand manager and Jason, whose real name is actually Faith Deniston, is a senior uh, account director so <laughs> <laughs> all right cool well we um i have a, something to that? show everybody Ooh. hold on one second i have to pause my slack so one of our good friends uh dan Pescors, uh who we had a podcast with last month um talked about branding and brands and stuff like that um pointed out to me a new feature for helium 10 elite members hopefully they bring it to everybody but yeah. let me share my screen it's really cool actually all right so um when you do a cerebro search i'm just gonna use one of these example asins here um for this new feature this little blue show historical trend button will pop up and uh, you can click that and it shows you uh, for here the last 24 months, um, total number of keywords uh, by type. Um, uh, so for example, here in July for this particular product, organic was 17,951 and paid was uh, 1328. And um, you can sort uh, these here. You can look at keyword distribution across products. And uh, the cool thing is you can go into, say, July, say, okay, how come I was indexing for so many keywords and then what happened uh, here? And click this, click apply filters, and uh, it will go to the historical trend. Oh, sorry, this was August. And uh, you can export this data and then compare it to your current keyword distribution. Um, and see if you're missing anything in your copy, your PPC targeting, all kinds of cool stuff. So again, um, not available to everybody. It's not even available on, on our accounts. Uh, I think it's like elite members only and they're testing it out, but definitely something to look forward to. A um, lot of cool data there. Oh, yes. But thought I'd share that. <laughs> very good to share i hope that you all are able to take advantage of that if you are elite members all right let's go let's go questions amir says good afternoon madam and sir good afternoon amir i hope you are having an awesome day awesome friday all right rosina hey rosina asks an fba product landed cost amazon charges add up to more than market selling price Rating reviews are low. Is removal order through grade and resale the only advisable option categories baby products? Um, while that is an option, I wouldn't recommend it first. Uh, if you're wanting to move the inventory, because I assume, you know, you don't want it just a bunch of baby products hanging around. What I would try first, and especially since we're in the period of the year where this will be pretty applicable, I would try to do uh, bulk discounts. Uh, or promotions first, because you are going to have to pay a little bit of money or not a little bit, but you will have to pay uh, to make that removal order anyway. So if you're already going to take the loss on the removal order, might as well take the loss on like some promotions discounts to move some of that inventory. Now, I don't know how much inventory you have or if this will move everything out before the end of the holiday season. So you may need to go and do a removal order at some point. But I would definitely recommend a promotion, coupon, discount, anything to get that inventory moving first. Even though you would <clears throat> be operating at a loss, it's better to at least try to get some additional review velocity if you want to revisit this product again and get some sales history there. Which is your opinion, Jason? In addition to what Faith said, it just sounds like this is a bad product as far yeah. as. So if it's done and um, you you should have a liquidation option. You're not going to get much money mm -hmm. for these. It's usually like 40 cents a unit or something like that, depending on what it is. Yeah. Um, if you do recall the inventory, 
um, make sure you have somewhere else to sell it or donate it or what have you. But um, you have to make a decision on uh, now it's accumulating storage mm -hmm. fees. How long has it been yeah. in there? Uh, is it worth it to try and uh, move the products uh, with a discount or something like Faith said, or just liquidate it, recall it, what have you, bring it to the swap meet when it comes uh, uh, comes back, sell it all for a dollar a unit and see what happens. But <laughs> um, yeah, this tough, uh, bad reviews. Sounds like yeah. product not going to work out. Oh, that's rough. I'm sorry, Rosina. All right. Next question, also from Rosina. For my gourmet food product, 30-day ACOS is at 29%. My daily total budget is $30, and I am going out of budget by 4 p.m. Pacific almost daily. Should I optimize bids more or should I add to daily budget? Help. Definitely add to daily budget um, because you want that campaign to be live throughout the day and going out of stock, or not out of stock, but going out of budget before 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific is about seven EST, you still want that to be running like way up until midnight, until the next day, until that period resets. So definitely add daily budget. You can go through and do some um, bid optimization after you've added to the budget. Yeah, just what Faith said, um, both here, uh, your 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 data on your advertising cost of sales um, could be, uh, is inaccurate actually, because you're, but you're, your ads are going out of budget at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so your your actual advertising cost of sales could be lower than that. Oh um, yeah. Depending on um, the, you know, shopping trends you could have for your particular type of product, a demographic that's, that's buying uh, later in the day or at nighttime that you're missing out on because your PPC is not um, displaying. Yes, yes. Very good add on there. All right, next question. Barack says, I'm creating five posts weekly on Amazon, but somehow it is showing the older posts instead of new ones. What criteria does Amazon use to display posts? Any tips to increase impressions? I actually don't know the answer to that one, Jason. Do you know what criteria they use? Is, is, he, is he talking about social posts? Yes. I've never, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm also on short. Let's <laughs> go. I've always seen first but yes let's, we will do it let's a go into steven's social posts and take a look <laughs> <laughs> hold on i'll share my screen um let's see if it's happening here okay so here's our social social posts uh thing um i'm on a different one hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> all good which one am I on here? Let's go to, there we go. Okay, so share my screen. All right, so. Mm, so there's some things here, like it says, post may receive limited impressions because it does not meet the quality bar. <laughs> The quality bar, huh? Your post doesn't meet the quality bar to help increase impressions. Correct the following issues: images with embedded text. Okay, sure. But let's uh, let's just take a look here. So the most recent one was eleven thirty. So we go to the Age of Sage store. And... <laughs> There's the soaps. The soaps. And take a look. Post. So. This is not the same one. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, OK. OK, so. The other two are scheduled. All right. All right. Then, then we have this cup and this cup and then a pink soap. Let's take a look real quick. This cup. Oh, oh and these ones switched. Interesting. Interesting. They might have got posted at the same time. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, uh, Barack, why that's happening. I'm guessing maybe they're not getting published, or they're yeah. an issue with that quality bar thing. But um, as far as I can tell here, uh, these are posting in order from what uh, we are doing on this particular account. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe. I wonder if Amazon has 
a, a hidden algorithm or something where if a one post is getting more impressions than the other, it'll show that one first or lower on the stock. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure here. So interesting. I, I haven't seen it. So <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. Someone in the comments said it's completely random, which seems Dan, odd, Dan but... is Dan is saying uh, here. Um, yeah. Posts are completely random for like no rhyme or reason what they show and do not show. Huh. I mean, maybe he's... Else, right, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're talking about the actual delivery, not not the what's posted on the actual post part mm, of the brand. True. Story. True. That's a, yeah, that, that's probably what it is. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, no, that was a good question. All right, Muhammad Ali Hamza asks if my product price is $11.99 and my conversion rate is 19%. My target A cost is 30%. And it means I require six clicks to get one sale. Okay. And if I calculate the amount that can be sent on advertising is spent on advertising. It's 360 because the 30% of 1199 is 360. And if I does okay, yeah, which is equal to if I set this bid, I can't get any impressions. So how can I bid on the keyword? So that, that I can get impressions on the I Math problem here to get uh, one sale. All right, and they said they said you never use math outside of high school. Well, <laughs> here we are. All right, the, yeah, this is a textbook. The, 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 the easy answer here is that you can't afford that keyword. Then, yeah, um, if if that's if that's your conversion rate on that keyword, um, yeah, because if you want more impressions, you want to bid a little bit higher to ensure that you have that visibility. So. So you, you either need to raise your price if that's possible, or you need to go after cheaper cost per click keywords that are highly relevant to your product. Yes. Uh, that's the answer there. Yes, yes. All right, next question. Mikey Likes It asks, when do holiday Q4 sales start to trend down from the spike? Noticing way less sales velocity today compared to yesterday. Uh, it really depends on your category, but I've seen just in general, um, at least it's based off of historical data from the last couple of years. In general, it usually starts to slow down after next week. So uh, kind of the week leading up into the new year is whenever I start to see it fall off. Um, what have you noticed, Jason? So, um, yeah, we just, I mean, the only thing we can really look at is last year. This is this is depending mm -hmm. on your product, your category. But there's a couple of things that are affecting you right now. Uh, real quick, uh, I'll share my screen and we can look at last year's spike on, I just put in gifts for mom, for example. And uh, when we go into magnet and take a look at the graph here, we can see the spike ends on the 18th of December last year. So two days. There's still a little bit of room there um, during that time. But the main thing is... If you go to Amazon and you're selling gifts for mom, you better have this green badge right now that says arrives before Christmas. Oh, that is a great call out, Jason. Yes. If you don't, it'll say, it'll be red and it says, may arrive, may after, arrive Christmas. after Christmas. Yes. And that's no good, especially for something that people are last minute shopping for. I'm trying to find one that says it may arrive after Christmas. Um, like all these sellers are on it this year. They said, we got gifts for mom. It's going to arrive it's, before Christmas. <laughs> it's still a little early. Um, a lot oh, that of is, is, that's fair. Yeah, we're about yeah, A lot of this is going to switch so. shortly here. Um, but uh, this, this spike, as, as far as... Um, from what we've been seeing, there was there was really it's 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 still there this year. Yes, um, I, I'm I'm expecting big big traffic this weekend. Uh, Same here, so. based off of historical data. So pretty excited for that. All right, good question. Hey, right, Jeffrey Valen says my title has 199 characters supplement category. The listing quality dashboard now indicates to improve title title too long. Can I ignore or has there been a change to title character limit? So when Amazon does make changes to title character limits, they will not tell you. Um, so it is 199 characters. If they did change it, they probably shortened it to 150. I would try that just to be safe. 
um, just to make sure that they don't come out with a suppression or anything. Now, if you had asked this question in like March, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Just don't worry about it. But just to be safe, I would say go ahead and shorten that title. Uh, if you can do so without sacrificing too many SEO terms or anything like that. Hey, Jeff. Um, face rate, uh, they are shortening titles more and more in all kinds of subcategories. Supplements, I think, is 150 now. Um, that product will get suppressed uh, soon. So yeah. uh, sh shorten the title. Um, certain ca clothing categories are down to 80 now. 80. Yeah. yeah. Um, 80. Uh, what was the other one? Baby, I think. Baby category is down to 100. Um, certain subcategories, yeah. not all. But uh, Amazon is moving more and more to get away from these titles that are what's well, my always my example like uh, office chair with lumbar support very yeah. good office chair lumbar support lumbar support office chair like uh, yeah. they don't want that they're they're moving away from that um, I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes a blanket thing with a uh, I don't even know I, I haven't sold anything on eBay in a while but. I know eBay did this uh, and they kept short having making you have shorter and shorter titles. Yeah. I think it's like 80 characters on eBay or something like that. Yeah, eBay is ridiculous. <laughs> it's 80. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yeah, that, that's that's definitely going to be the future. Um, yeah. As we as we move into more visual, um, uh, the, this is the way that consumer society is trending, you know, more TikTok, more stuff like that. Here's something I want to show everyone in the maternity category that we saw this week was... Um, They are, let's grab one of these things. Hopefully I can, hopefully it works. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, for some reason, this category and some of these other clothing categories, you, you can now scroll the images. As opposed on, to just clicking on desktop. desktop. Which is really nice, yeah. Right, um, kind of strange. Cause when you come to the page, it looks like this. <laughs> So it looks like the image is messed up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th this is something that it looks like they're implementing. And again, this is all based on, um, you know, mobile data here. People are um, in the app and uh, this, <laughs> I can't swipe, but I would, <laughs> I, I'm, oh, I'm in the mobile app. I can't swipe on my screen. <laughs> I'm trying to swipe with my mouth. Yeah. No, I've got I've got that nice Apple mouse where you can just like swipe over. But um, yeah, this is this is becoming a, a, a trend here as far as the titles mm -hmm. go. Yeah, yes. And then um, Ha U P T P One says my competitors use background pictures to stand out more from the crowd. That's against Amazon's terms, right? Because I was thinking about the same. If it's not allowed, how do I report them? Makes sense. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So. Technically, it is against against Amazon's terms of service, but I have noticed more and more sellers are able to get away with this without Amazon flagging the listing. Now, I would not recommend going forward uh, with your own background image right now, just because, you know, sales period that we're in. Um, and I don't even know if I would officially recommend it, but I would also not waste resources going after the seller either. Um, because a lot of times, just like general seller reports like that, if you're not reporting through brand registry, like if they're on your listing, like if it's just a seller that you've noticed, uh, usually those just fall into the void. Unless that seller is doing something super egregious, um, a lot of times that'll fall into the void. But what do you recommend, Jason? I'm going to disagree with Faith here. All right. <laughs> I'm open to that. Always open to see what's um, Yes, technically it's still in there and it's against terms of service, but Amazon um, is seeing that these images convert better. For example, I just put in coconut shampoo and this is what uh, Hop TP is talking about. This particular mm -hmm. seller has a nice coconut flower in here. If we put in, um, how about uh, chlorophyll? I can't spell chlorophyll. Supplement you'll see that um, some sellers have this like green thing here. Um, what's a, another big one? Um, the, another one I've seen is like, um, like that, Oh, we always yeah, like shelf. pet toys. Yeah. Pet pet toys. Toys. So they have the dog in here. It converts better. Um, 
here like here's a little doggy here's a dog and a cat um another dog here the, this these convert better um worst thing that happen is the image will get suppressed and you just put the, the old one back on yeah so right. amazon won't like completely remove it you have to appeal and everything so it's an easy fix um anything yeah. i mean this all started with clothing and then also um mattresses was i'm always beginning. hesitant to make any changes that might lead to a suppression even if they're easy to fix around the holidays so that's kind of where i base my answer on but jason is also correct here and that amazon is getting a lot more lax about it um well, this this particular mattress seller went way <laughs> <laughs> now, this will get yanked most likely with the with yeah, the badge with the on here and all like, this stuff. On the left, the M O L B L L Y or whatever, that one's fine. Um, uh, almost every because this is what mattresses used to look like. It was just like a picture of the mattress, and as, as soon as people started doing this with bedroom settings and all that, or people sleeping on them, uh, obviously conversion went up. Uh, you can relate to these. Uh, much more than just a picture of a white mattress on a white background. Right. Um, this this is this is spreading to all categories, all categories. Um, Shelving's another in, one I've noticed. Oh yeah, shelving. Here, here's kids' toys. Like there's a picture of the little kid in there. Uh, here's a girl playing yeah. with some flowers. Mm -hmm. um, shelving, like like face said. Do, 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 do. So the competition's doing the testing for you. If yes. they're using these types of images, then um, then it's working. So I don't know why Amazon isn't working. Am I frozen? No. Okay. Here's shelving. Obviously, the shelf doesn't come with a bunch of books and accoutrement and a clock and a picture. Uh, it's just more relatable uh, this yeah. way with uh, showing you what kind of capacity and what type of items you could put on these shelves. Here's one. It's yeah. not particularly not a great Photoshop, but yeah. um, here, <laughs> here's one that has some I like uh, that one. It's weights. like each shelf can have 250. You know what? That's good. I like that. <laughs> so uh, to answer your question, HopDB, uh, definitely try it out, especially if competition's doing it. I, and after Jason's explanation, I am inclined to agree. And this is why it's great to work at MAG. You get differing opinions and you're like, oh, that makes sense. All right. Next question. Curtis McParland says, greetings. Brand registered here on Seller Central. Have a coffee mug that landed in the books category. Already went through brand, brand registry and Jeff at Amazon. Zero success. They refuse to change it. Any advice? Thanks. You got a coffee mug? Put yeah, in the book, in the book category. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And they're denying category change? Um, Even after he's escalated, too. Oof, Curtis. So this is one uh, I've, I've dealt with one of these in the past. This is one where you really have to push um, with images, like cell phone images and all that. I'm, I'm, maybe you've done this, but... Uh, literally telling amazon that they're stupid uh this is a coffee mug not a book look here's me holding it here's a picture of it why is it in the books category and and it gets escalated and escalated uh i'm sure you've already tried deleting the the SKU for 24 hours and doing a full update with the correct category um and then it's giving you with like a five two eight one error whatever the heck it is um if it doesn't have too many reviews or you don't have FBA uh, inventory in, the nuclear option would be to just make a new um, ASIN uh, for for that particular product. But it sounds like it's established, but it's not doing you any good in the books category. That's for sure. No. Um, yeah, this is unfortunately something that you have to keep pushing with brand registry, uh, uh, especially because they're probably going to be your best way of support. Jeff at Amazon. Uh, Emails have been pretty bad uh, responses lately. I, I think the mm -hmm. I think the word is out, and um, a lot of templated responses that just come back with no help. So yeah, uh, you need to work with the traditional uh, methods here, Curtis. Yeah, he's got over a thousand units in FBA. So, oof, Ugh. popular product too. Yeah. Mm. 
Sorry, Curtis. <laughs> All right. Dan Hall asks, help me understand BSR, why it matters and how do I improve it? Good question. So BSR, bestsellers rank. So that's going to be important um, for based off your category. So if you sell AirPod cases and you have a BSR of like 18 or something, then you're going to show up on a certain page. There's definitely other benefits as well. That's the first thing I thought of. It also matters in terms of indexing, um, not only because you'd be featured on a specific page, but you know, you would want to be featured um, for keywords that you're indexing for. The higher your BSR, uh, typically the more words you index for as well, uh, which the lower the lower your BSR. Sorry, the lower your BSR. Yeah. Whenever I say higher, I mean like one, two, three, like <laughs> high up on the list, not like 1000 or anything. So it'll be clear. The lower your BSR, uh, the more uh, words you're going to be indexing for typically. Uh, unless you're in like a super, super niche category and there's only like three keywords that lead to your product or something. But um, those are some, that's why it matters, uh, mostly because you want to get some more searchability, visibility, indexing, all that. How to improve it. Um, you're going to want to check competitors in the same category and kind of see what words they're indexing on. Helium 10 can help with that and make sure you're targeting like those exact keywords in your titles and bullet points. Um, some other ways to improve it, make sure that, um, you know, your you are, your listing looks as good as your competitors, I guess, because if you're right next to them, you're going to want somebody to convert over that. Um, da -da -da -da. there's something else I'm missing, something else I'm missing on how to improve BSR advertising. Um, what else, Jason? So uh, in addition to what Faye said, uh, but BSR for anyone that, that's uh, new here is, uh, stands for best sales rank. Um, basically what that is, is within your category or subcategory, there is a rank of uh, top selling products, essentially. Yes. Um, so I just put in kids toys and this Elmo here is number 438 today and toys and games. Um, the lower this number, number 47, for example, the more popular uh, and relevant you are in your category to all of the keywords um, that you are indexing for as well as not, I shouldn't say that, not all of them, but um, more relevant to the traffic that's going to be coming in. So your, your, your search, your organic search, essentially. Um, when I put in kids toys, you've got your sponsored products here and then organically number one, um, uh, you would think it would say number one for, kids toys here but this is the most relevant for that search term kids toys and it's number 438 in toys and games how do you improve this the the bottom line is sell more so yeah. uh, in addition to making sure your listing is fully optimized with all your keywords and and your ppc campaigns are going uh sell through ultimately me is is what increases your your best sellers yes. rank that's what it stands for and the lower your number the better you're going to do Yes. All right. Matthew McCormick asks, can you add a video to a product without having one of your images get caught, cut off on the carousel? Uh, from what I understand, if you have seven images and you upload a video, it's just going to replace that seventh image, right? Yeah. So unfortunately not, Matthew. You would have to pick between six images and then have the video. All right. Next question. Jay Chow says, just launched a new product and immediately got a one star rating with no purchases. Seller support says they can't help. Any ideas? Oh, um, really? mm, no purchases and they're not helping. Was it just a rating? To, it was probably just a rating <clears throat> and it wasn't yeah. a verified purchase. I would keep fighting this one mm -hmm. um, until they tell you that they're to stop um, messaging like them about the it. Last word is what they call um, it. <laughs> enroll your product in vine uh it, and hope that you get some decent vine reviews to get that up or mm -hmm. you're right at the beginning if you don't have a lot of fba inventory in just like the coffee cup but he he does he has a thousand units in there um you could do a relaunch uh new new mm -hmm. skew new ace and new upc uh and, and go that route but uh this is this is rough sorry it happened to yeah. you jay so sorry 
All right, next question. Muhammad says, yes, sir, Amazon is not releasing my amount from the last two months and I want to buy inventory. This amount is stuck due to refunds. How can we manage these refunds in FBA wholesale business? Should I open a case with Amazon? Yeah, you can open a case with Amazon and request that um, they adjust your disbursement dates so you can try to get that back. Um, I have seen them come back on those cases though and say something like, oh, we reserve a certain amount for returns, blah, blah, blah. So that's that might be what they're going to say um if yeah it says amount stuck due to refunds yeah they might say that they're going to keep back like three thousand for or something for refunds but it's worth opening up a case at least to see if you can get that dispersed a little faster they if you if you're getting a lot of refunds they're gonna they're gonna re, your account level reserve is going to be large um and yeah. there's a good chance that like face said any ticket you make is not going to uh, go through you're gonna have to wait for the return window period um uh rolling for for you to get disbursements now um if you can find a way to reduce your returns if this is a product issue or something like that uh, you you need or you know maybe if you have like 10 different products and it's one of them that's causing the the issue you could maybe think about not selling that product if it's getting a ton of returns Mm -hmm. um, but right now it, you, you, it's affecting your entire account. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately you have to play by their rules here and, and, and it sounds like there's a high risk of return for your account. So the disbursements are being, uh, held at account level reserve. Um, so that's that. Yes. So Ooh, a lot of bad news today in these comments. Yeah. yeah. Lot, not a lot of easy solutions here. All right. Next question. Um, Anz Ali says, I'm an Amazon FBA assistant for private, li private label. How can I get a client? Uh, you can advertise on like LinkedIn or something. Um, you can advertise on Fiverr. Um, I know recently we've experimented with uh, meeting up with Amazon sellers through meet me so that might be another one to try as well but i would start with like a third party um i wouldn't say contract services but like services like that like to kind of get your name out there but. yeah i mean i i uh, like face said there's all kinds of gig work sites and stuff like that focus on something uh, get get specialized in one piece so if you yes. are great at seo just do seo uh, offer that service, get good at it, then go some go with another um, type of you know catalog work or whatever. Uh, if you try and uh, plop yourself on Fiverr or something like that and offer full service management, um, I can do everything. Um, you're gonna find yourself um, getting unhappy clients. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's going to affect your because those sites have like reviews and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I used to uh, probably not uh, if you're in the U.S. Uh, I, I used to get clients uh, on Craigslist, um, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook groups, stuff like that. Uh, so there's there's plenty of there's plenty of ways to promote yourself out there. Yes. Next question. Brandon Himmel says, I finished my full listing optimization with you last week. And so far, the sales have been amazing. I would highly recommend Mag. Y'all did an amazing job. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Yes. So happy to see uh, the results of all of our hard work. So awesome. All right. Next question. Alexandru Bahan says, in your opinion, when it comes to keywords in the back end, is the title field weighted equally when it comes to search relevancy compared to the generic keyword field from an SEO point of view? I would say that the title field is actually weighted um, not equally to the generic uh, keyword field, just because with the title, that's not only customer facing, but it's the perfect opportunity to place in an SEO term that um, like if you're selling AirPod cases, like just say like, pink AirPod case for AirPods. That's really repetitive. Maybe don't say that, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. That title field is going to be weighted heavy, heavier than if you only had like a um, case for headphones or something. And then like AirPod case in the SEO terms. I hope that makes sense. Jason might be able to clean up that answer a little bit for me. 
Yeah, uh, face is correct here. Title field mm -hmm. is weighted heavier. And there's one uh, way you can uh, see that that's the case is because the canonical uh, URL. Yes. Uh, the first five to six words in your title are going to hold weight not only on Amazon more, but and Google search and other tra uh, other types of Yes, uh, because of that canonical URL. Because <laughs> right here, if we see Sesame Street, little laughs tickle me, Elmo. Um, you can see right here, Amazon.com, Sesame Street, talking, laughing, toddlers. I don't know why their can canonical URL is different here. They might have just changed their title. Yeah, I was so, going to say that was probably the original title or something. But yeah. I, I'm, that's what I'm guessing. Um, but uh, essentially, more weight here. So title, search terms. Bullets, uh, description, alt text. Yep. In that order. Next question. Good one. All right. Brandon says, so if I have a dog photoshopped in with my product, it could get taken down. Uh, technically, yes. Most likely not. It's a seat cover with a dog sitting on top of the seat cover. I saw that on a lot of the top products in my category. Brandon, you're probably going to be okay here. I'm testing a main photo. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think I might just roll the dice and see if it gets flagged. I think that's the best bet because, yeah, you're correct. Like, in this category, there's dogs everywhere. And I don't know. You're also with us. So if something happens, we can definitely take care of it. But um, I think you'll be okay, Brandon. Um, definitely. There, the, this, this will not get taken down. Yep. You'll be good. You will be good. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's even ones in here that that, that have like uh, a full background, yeah. Yeah, they crop, really. they crop with the full background in here. Yeah. So, um, something like this, yeah. or yeah, I like said this. that and I, I realized I can see my mouse, so they didn't know what I was pointing at. Um, but yeah, no, you you should be a okay there, Brandon. I'm I wonder sorry. if there's an Amazon Basics dog dog cover here. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's see. Yeah, it's Probably. got the most Amazon Basics main image. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, it's Amazon's choice, too. Oh. Oh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry to have incited a little panic there with my initial answer. I was operating on terms of service from, like, this time last year. But, um, no, you'll, you'll be good, Brandon. But always good to double check. So, next question. Do you have any recommend in, from Brandon? Uh, do you have any recommendations with a freight forwarder from China to FBA DDP? I'm getting quotes, but like would like recommendations for peace of mind. I over. Oh, okay, yeah, Curtis is from his last question, but um, over a thousand units in FBA. Okay, there we go, freight forwarder. I don't have one off the top of my head. I know they exist, and I know that there are good ones, but I. <sighs> Let me see. I think there's there's two or three on our website and the third party. Okay. I, I me, I can't I'll pull that more. up to <laughs> if you want to get the next question. I'll do a little bit. The, bot the bottom line here, Brandon, is you need to call around and find one that works for you. Everyone's going to be different. Um, make sure that they can work with you and your manufacturer uh, within your budgets. Thanks. Right, seeing if we have freight forwarders. Right. Uh, DS says the SKU does not match any ASIN and contains invalid values for attributes required for creation of new ASIN. How to fix? What I would do here, DS, I would start with downloading your processing file um, that you uploaded with Amazon and then seeing exactly what fields they've highlighted in red. Amazon, ha and you know that I don't like to give Amazon compliments, but I will say that they've gotten a lot better with like trying to help people with flat files, as in like um, they'll let you download your file and see exactly what was wrong with it. Whereas like a couple of years ago, you just had to guess. Um, and they even have a feature now where whenever you upload it, uh, they'll preemptively tell you what might be missing out of that file that's necessary. Um, it's not always correct. I uploaded one the other day and it's like, you're missing this, but I was doing a parentage. So with a parentage file, you, there are certain fields you just went and fill out. Um, but to short answer your question, I would like, I think we could better answer this if we actually saw um, the flat file, but just double check the 
processing report, see what Amazon is recommending and like their red fields, and then go from there. It's also possible that the SKU, and this is a very small possibility, but if you've used that SKU before and you haven't waited like 48 hours or so uh, to reuse the SKU, then it might come back with that error as well. Um, but first, uh, download the flat file, see what's marked in red, and then go from there. But let's see, I've seen invalid values for attributes whenever it's like a unit count or something and somebody puts in like grams instead of milliliters. I've seen it with that. So I don't know if that applies to UDS, but um, it could be that you just need to like convert like uh, grams to millimeters or something like that. This is, this, this is, this sounds like a, a there's a skewer. This is usually a UPC or GS1 issue. Um, so oh, that is. I forgot the, that's the, the whole skew, thing. The SKU does not match any ASIN, contains invalid value for attributes required to creation of new ASIN. I have a video as well about uploading GS1 certificates, so I will link you to that. Also, also DS, um, it's, it, it sounds like you, you, you don't have this product online yet, so just make a new SKU for the ASIN. Uh, there's something wrong with the SKU. GS1 just bought my GS1 barcodes two weeks ago. It says. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Is, okay. This, yeah. Is a, this is a GS1 All issue. All right. For First item listed on Amazon. Okay, yeah, GS1 issue. Here, I'm sending a video. So what what happened? What happened is your your GS1, uh, and the GS1 database is linked to your business, so your LLC or whatever. Amazon is trying to link your GS1 to your brand name, which may be different. Mm, yes, yes, And yes. you need to connect the two. You need a, a, a letter of authorization a lot of times uh, saying my LLC or is allowed to sell this brand name. I give it permission, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's why you're getting this skew error. That video... Uh, that faith linked should be the correct one. I'm I'm not gonna watch it right now, but that one should help. Yeah, you it's out. the one about uploading GS1 video or certificates. So yeah. yeah. I got you. All right. Wish Opons asks, what is the global promotion sales in the top right of the seller central homepage? I removed from Amazon's permissions from selling my products globally. Um let's see. That's all your sales within the marketplaces that you're selling in. So yeah. Uh, if, if you removed if you removed Amazon sell your products globally, you might still be enrolled in in in, in uh, remote fulfillment for Canada and Mexico. It would show that as well. I mean, we can show yeah. uh, my screen here. He's talking about this section right here. Oh remote yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Any deals that you have in those marketplaces? Uh, so it basically tells you what it is right here in in this in this uh, paragraph. Yes, good question. All right, next. Irfan Khan says, please, please, please tell me about rule-based bidding. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'd like a little burp or something, but yeah. <laughs> in, in, in a nutshell, Irfan, it, it, it's, a, it's a way to set guard rails on keywords. Um, essentially, uh, you can uh, take not have to guess the bidding strategy and again this is this is amazon and even in their 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 explanation of uh, of this when it came out it's like you know they're unsure about it yeah. uh, we do use it uh on 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 some campaigns and accounts it's only for sponsored products i believe um mm -hmm. and yeah. amazon automatically adjusts your bids essentially within the rule set that you give it um yeah so and, i would recommend Irfan if you are interested in that uh, the best rule base or the best rule in my opinion is dynamic up and down because then Amazon's going to adjust your bid up and down based off of what the average CPC is unless he's talking about budget rules it's uh, it, it, it's uh, the, the rule based bidding for bids okay sorry <laughs> sorry I saw that I was like oh yeah like dynamic up and down and all that okay cool Next, Geraldine, yeah. you there? All right. 
Brandon says, I've found there are freight forwarders that hustle on LinkedIn. Might be useful to use some socials to try and find products and reach out directly. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely do a little bit of networking there and see which ones work best for you. I see them on the meetup groups a lot, Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, find a find an Amazon seller meetup group. Uh, it doesn't have to be in, in your area. Like I went on one that was in uh, like Philadelphia the other night and it was uh, and I'm in California. So uh, they're all real cool. Uh, they, they want more people, more community. Uh, there's there's definitely like freight forward people on there, tax people, all kinds of stuff. Philadelphia, Jason's Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next question. Sam S says, do you offer a monthly package or is it a per project? How does your pricing model work? So uh, there are a couple of different options. Uh, that would be under, not career. For full, full service, for full service contracts, Sam, uh, uh, or full, full service uh, service, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we have a uh, we have all kinds of different contracts. Uh, we're very um, we're very adaptable to what needs uh, each client needs and uh, what what um, they want. Essentially, some clients don't want any creative. Some clients don't want any PPC. Um, and then on the other hand, on the other side of that, we do have uh, you know one time project work. Uh, you know, uh, we have someone on the show here today that uh, just finished a full listing optimization with us and Brandon. Um, so stuff like that, you know, account reinstatements, uh, listing reinstatements, brand name changes, UPC GS1 changes, uh, A plus content, brand store, brand story. Uh, it's, it is not, uh, we don't have anything that's hourly. It's all per project based or full service um, contract. Yeah, like an X amount a month, X amount per month. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to uh, get uh, in contact, you can just go to our website, uh, myamazonguy.com. Our, our website, advertising.amazon.com, and then and then do rule-based bidding. No, there's the full management service form for real. You can uh, chat here uh, or put this in or call, and someone will get to you and talk to you and, and uh, this see is. What See if we can work with you. This is the new way to get a hold of John Aspinall since he is no longer in our coaching section. <laughs> All right, next question. Dan Hall said, to piggyback off Matthew's question, when you have more than one video, can you pick the order which they show or is it completely random? Uh, it's which one, it's whichever one that you applied to the ASIN first. So if you have one showing first that you want to show second, just remove it from that one and then resubmit it in the order that you want them to show up. Yep. Yep. Most, re most recent video will show, will show up on the product detail page. Mm -hmm. And then Dan Hall also asks, also sometimes they only show one video and sometimes they show both. Anything I can do to control this or do I just have to deal with Amazon's crazy ways? Uh, that sounds like a, an Amazon glitch actually. Cause I've, seen them uh, show both videos or if there's more than one video most of the time so i'm on this shelf that we were looking at here hold on oh, okay true they only have one video and they have a 360 but um <clears throat> there should only ever be one video if they want if you want to see a second video it would be right here in this list um I haven't seen two videos show on PDP here before, so. I'm trying to think of an example to show you, but yeah. Um, next question. Muda Sir says, can you please download a template of a flat file for me? We got our flat file example. I don't know where to add category and Excel template. All right, let's do it. Um, let's do it. So let's go inventory. I'm oh, sorry, catalog, add products via upload, download spreadsheet, get product template, Amazon.com, assuming that you're in the US. And uh, here's uh, our category browse new tree. So what are we selling, Faith? 
Uh, we're gonna sell um, koozies for like for sodas. Hand koozie. Yeah. Fun fact: you can't uh, put the word koozie in your SEO. Oh yeah, koozie is trademarked. It's trademarked. They'll take that stuff down. Uh, let's go with the beverage insulator here. Select, scroll down, click generate template. And there is your flat file. Let's pull it up. So once you find your, your, your category, like we just did with koozies or beer, uh, with the insulators, all of your valid values are going to be already in the sheet. So yes. product type, which is your category, it's going to be already here for it. It's the only thing that the, you can't really mess it up. Your mm -hmm. item type keyword, your subcategory, can and bottle insulators going to be already in there. If you're brand registered, your brands are going to be listed here. So this would be a monster product. Um, then you're going to put in your SKU, name of your product, description, manufacturer, yada, 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 et cetera. Here's your bullet points and key product features. Um, and that's how you would get your uh, template flat file. Yes. Excellent. Next question. Vasil says, received my first IP complaint. Is it something to worry about? Has some character from a show on a product. Um, it, it'll say, it'll tell you there if it has yeah. any impact on your account now. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Actually, we can just, we can demo this because uh, we have, some of these on Steven's account. <laughs> <laughs> Let's on. just see what this looks like. <laughs> uh, so you're going to go into performance, account health, and um, so here's an IP violation, right? Is that what he said he had? Yeah. yeah. So we can click that. It's going to tell us what it is. <clears throat> oh, is yeah, the Star Wars Grogu. Star Wars one, yeah. Um, so account health rating, it's a, it's a medium... Uh, repeat violation. So this one we we, we got to look out for. Yeah. Uh, if it's your first violation, I'll probably say low. Uh, your POA is going to depend on what kind of IP violation it is for this particular one. Um, you know, our POA will say that this is satire and uh, we will we'll take it down, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll get removed. Gotta love those satire laws. All right. Next question. Kumar Brown says, I'm new to selling on Amazon and I'm in the process of getting a product. Once that is finalized, do you suggest to go for brand registry or sell generic? I'm wanting to sell the item for the long term. Definitely, definitely, definitely then get brand registry. You want to trademark uh, brand registry is going to open you up to a lot of opportunities on Amazon to kind of get the word out there. So you can do A plus content. Uh, but most importantly, um, if you only went generic, you would only be able to do sponsored products advertising with brand registry that opens you up to two additional campaign types, which uh, opens you up to some additional spots there on the initial search page. So um, definitely you're going to want brand registry. Short answer. Uh, a lot of reasons why, but yes. You will want one. <laughs> don't don't upload your product until you get your brand registered. Yes, very important. <laughs> very, very important. Because then Good. you're then you're gonna have to deal with doing a brand name change from generic to whatever your brand name is. Uh yeah, brand registry, that... getting the node connected, all that stuff. Yes. All right. Good question. Next. This is a, the second part, it looks like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. I saw brand registry. I'm like, uh, next. I right, also have brand registry. Do you first get your logo packaging created, then go for brand registry? And what are some tips for brand registry to avoid timely and costly mistakes? So good question, Kumar. Good second part to your first question, rather. So you would want to go ahead and have like your logo and packaging, at least the design created. So we have an example image that I share sometimes uh, with people who want to go for brand registry. You don't need like your finalized beautiful packaging but say this is the pack let's just say i sell airpods and this is my packaging and my brand is um faith's airpods so what i would do for brand registry is i'm just going to print out my logo and i'm just going to tape it here and then that's my image so you can do not that tape, not tape it this is a yeah, sticker like glue it yeah like make it a sticker make it nicer but yeah like so that would be it you're, you're then, just 
You're just doing a word mark. On, exactly. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So you don't you don't actually need a logo or packaging. Um, right. It all can you help, need is a brand though. name. You yeah, get that registered can... uh, with the USPTO. Once you get your serial number, it comes 24 hours after you apply. Um, you can submit for brand registry. Mm -hmm. Now, what Faith is getting at is for brand registry, you're going to need... Um, an image and let me just pull it up faith so yeah they just want to show they just want to see your product with the brand name on it yeah so let me i'm pulling it up right now so oh he got it. it he got it he got the example which is better than my um makeshift example so th this is this is an extreme example of how simple it can be um and this is just again like faith said um the brand name didn't really need a, the the little egg beaters uh, <laughs> weren't necessary Very but, basic. <laughs> uh, on a box that's not even the box that we ship the glasses in it's just a random box and the logo on there and this is what we submitted for um the brand registry on amazon and the specimen for um the uspto trademark Right. Next question. Healthy Hindu says, why sales are low on the weekends? Uh, it would depend on your product category. Honestly, some products are going to sell better, like uh, office supplies, like toners, um, stuff like that is going to sell better, like Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, so it really depends on your category, whereas like something else might sell better on the weekends. So it's really going to depend on your category, why sales would be lower on the weekends. Like Faye said, anything in industrial scientific is going to be bad on the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Anything outdoorsy, outdoors cate uh, category, um, unless it's raining that weekend or something. But um, the other thing I see is like film and photography equipment. Um, uh, consumers, uh, not, con uh, with not consumer electronics, but uh, anything where... Your, if your product is something that the person is using on the weekend, they're using it on the weekend, they're not buying it on the weekend. Or if your product is something that is only uh, come to a need during the weekday, like Faith mentioned, printer cartridges uh, for, for industrial printers or, or um, uh, you know, anything like that, you're going you're gonna to see low sales on the weekends. Yes. Good question. And then Kumar Brown says, final question, in the dashboard final sales, is that the total after Amazon fees or gross? So yeah, that's going to be your total after like Amazon fees, returns, or anything like that. I, I, hold on. Let's make sure uh, that's correct, Faith. Yes. Um, let, us, let us make sure first, because I just put that off and didn't even double check. I'm, I'm going to make sure what you said is final sales. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hate the new UI. I hate the new UI. Me and you both. Oh my gosh. Bring back old UI 2023. <laughs> I can't. Something's wrong. I can't see. Uh, I think face correct here, but always. Look <laughs> I at, think she's correct. <laughs> yeah, I think it's your your final sales is 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 your is your. It might be your gross. I can't see the darn thing. It's not showing it to me for some reason. So, um, yeah, let's go with face answer. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope she's right. All right. <laughs> I am going to also see if I can figure that out too. But Dante okay. TV says, hey, y'all. Hey, Dante. Awesome. Cool Peeps says, happy holidays. Happy holidays, cool peeps. Happy holidays, cool peeps. Right. Cool Peeps also says the restocking limit has been bad for us, so we can only do FBM for our best selling SKU now. If we sell 100 units a day with FBA with the Prime badge, what is the projected units for FBM? Thank you. Um, that's a good I, question. It's asking on a, on a conversion. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. This is going to be completely depend on your product, what your competition is doing, all that. Um, we have plenty of clients that are FBM only and they, they do perfectly fine. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but you're going to see a decrease in conversion. I can't tell you exactly how much. Uh, there's no way for me to know that without seeing the, the, 
the product and what the comp competition looks like. Next. Yes, next question. And then Cool Peep says, what is the current check-in time at Amazon warehouses, especially the one in North Carolina? Thanks. It really depends on where it's at. I don't know about North Carolina for sure. Do you, Jason? Yeah, this one's actually been really, really fast uh, lately. Awesome. The only reason yeah. I know that is because there's a lot of stuff that comes in through Florida and it it goes to this warehouse in North, mm. it goes to the big warehouse in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, this is also going to be dependent on if everything's prepped already or if Amazon needs to label it or anything like that. What type of shipment you're sending in? Is it LTL? Is it palletized? Is it, um, is it UPS boxes? Whatever. But uh, this part, it's funny that you mentioned this particular warehouse. It's, it's, it's been that like a lightning speed. Uh, yeah. That's funny. And it's even funnier that you actually knew the answer to that. <laughs> I, I saw it. I, I think Stephen uh, mentioned it too yesterday. Somebody asked about this particular warehouse in the live Q&A yesterday. Oh, true. Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet. But interesting. Very interesting. All right. Next question. Also from Cool Peeps. When do you think they'll ease up all the restocking restrictions on all Amazon FBA products or accounts? Sorry. Um, I've heard through the Amazon Grapevine that um, the storage issues are expected to continue into Q1. But with that being said, I've also noticed um, that Amazon is granting like restock limits when we ask. And I've also noticed that they've quietly um, increased some limits for other people as well without having to ask. So it looks like it's already starting to ease up, but I wouldn't expect it to fully go back to normal until sometime in January. Yeah, this past week, uh, we've seen a lot of um, restock limits getting granted, mm -hmm. uh, as well as random increases, like Faith said, like uh, clients that don't even need an increase. They just, yeah, like, like, just we go. didn't ask for one. And then now yeah. they can ship in 50,000 units, um, as well as denials from previous cases uh possibly triggering a, a random restock uh increase uh that happened on one of our uh, client accounts yes it, it denied like three or four times and then this week uh, we, we just randomly on i think it was on like wednesday it was like i looked at it and i was like oh wow we have we have five thousand more units uh yeah. do, you're not going to get a notification for you have to actually go check every day <laughs> like yeah yeah, so that's what I meant by quietly. Like, you know, they just surprise here. You can send in more units, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's getting better. Um, I would recommend maybe at least trying asking for a storage limit increase if needed. Good question, Cool Peeps. All right. Oh, and Cool Peeps also sent us a super sticker. Thank, Thank you, you so cool much. Peeps. Right. Uh, Wish Ponds asks, can you use the trademark in your advertising keywords, but not SEO? Yes. So you can advertise any customer search behavior, um, but you can't put it in SEO just because it can get your listing yanked. But you can advertise on any customer search behavior. Um, most, 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 most. Yeah, that that is true. That's that's a very good addition. Most customer search behaviors um, still can't advertise on like drinking or like tobacco or anything. Well, no, like no, no, no. You can you, you can use those keywords. Oh, it just. Um, Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not in your SEO. You're, but not you're in your SEO. Sorry. Not not at all in your SEO. Um, there, there, there's one, there's one or two keywords that came up this week for some reason that, um, even though Amazon allows you to advertise on it, does we're we're saying that it's actually not, um, displaying. And these were these were um, uh, adult keywords, um. So, uh, just keep that in mind. But. Yeah. Most of the adult keywords, they work too, uh, for, for PPC, for advertising. Yes. Uh, but no, yeah, you don't put a trademark in your SEO, your copy or anything like that. Um, the one exception here or the main exception here is you Compatible can replacement for, yeah, you can, yeah. if you sell like iPhone cases, you can put, you know, um, iPhone, or. Uh, uh, case brand name iPods. Yeah, brand name case compatible with iPhone four or whatever. Yeah. Four. <laughs> Hopefully not the four. I mean, it's, it's I don't even old. think those are supported by like, <laughs> recent iOS updates anymore. That's <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. So yeah, good question. 
All right, Wish Upon says, can you talk more about what it takes to change your brand name on Amazon? Can you keep your history of sales and reviews or is there damage done to the account history? No, so the sales and reviews are gonna stay at the ASIN level no matter what is changed on that ASIN. Um, so what the brand name process change process looks like is, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but I feel like Amazon has like a self-service for this now. Like if you go to help and you type in brand name change, it'll give you like a drop down of your brands because what you're going to want is it used to be really hard. Um, it's gotten significantly easier. The process is, is, is basically, um, first going through brand registry and, uh, petitioning for brand name change and using that image that we just showed earlier saying, Hey, this is the brand name. It's, it's changed. Uh, like face said, yeah. there is the, a self-service, yeah, I yeah. Know it, um, but, but ultimately it. you're going to have to, this will open a ticket. And uh, th they're going to um, ask for that image with the brand name showing on the packaging or the product. And then it's going to get uh, linked to the ASIN. Now, if you're lucky, you'll be able to go into the back end of the ASIN and go into brand and just click the little drop down to the new one and click enter and um, it'll push through. But a lot of times, uh, when they do do this, it's going to require you to delete the ASIN for 24 hours and mm -hmm. um, do a full update in the template flat file with the new brand name in the uh, flat file. Yeah, that's just going to refresh the back end information. But it, again, it's not going to touch like sales history or reviews or ranking or anything like that. All of that is attached to the ASIN. When you're doing a brand name change, all it's doing is changing a piece of data, like changing a mm -hmm. title or a bullet point. It's just a lot harder to do at this time. Yeah. Not as hard as it used to be. Now, at least they have that self-service type of thing to get you started. Yes. Yeah, which is really nice. Um, but yeah. Awesome. And then Dante TV asks, how do you all track the PPC split test? I'm having trouble following my PPC split test performance because I run many campaigns. So I have to split test one campaign at a time, which takes a lot of time. Any advice? I'm not sure what he means by a PPC split test. He's doing an A-B test on PPC. Dante, yeah. this sounds like something that you would need a, a automation for, especially if you're running a ton of campaigns. I mean, yeah. I can I can test I can you know test via a, a few campaigns manually if you're if you're um, maybe trying like a broad versus a phrase or whatever. But ultimately, um, I'm not really sure what you're talking about here. <laughs> Matthew McCormick says, I know how to create campaigns in bulk. If I want to add products to campaigns in bulk, what is the best option for this? Resubmit the same bulk creation file I originally created, but change the operation value to update instead of create and add the excuse and upload it. Yeah, that sounds right to me. But <laughs> to be fair, I don't do um, a lot of bulk updates with uh, campaigns this way just because I'm not in the advertising team. So whenever I personally make updates, it's usually manually. But this sounds right uh, based off of what I know from regular Amazon flat files. Yeah, you should be able to to add. He's, try, he's trying to add new targets. I guess mm -hmm. can you go back to the first part. Yeah, so Remember? that would be. Oh. Sorry. No, 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 no. Why were you guys move clicking things around? This is the wrong question. No, it's the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just trying to add add uh, new products. Yeah, you, you you should be able to just do an update. Yes. Yeah, instead of create, you would do update because the campaigns are already created, so you're just adding the targets in there. Yes. All right, next question. Dan Hall says, my videos have been uploaded for months and they just keep switching order in one or both. Uh, check check how many views the one that keeps switching to is. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, because Amazon might be trying to prioritize the yeah. one that's the most popular. It sounds it sounds like they're maybe doing um, a relevancy uh, switch. Mm, yeah, so. yeah. Awesome. Simon Pearson asks, does Amazon consider it a stock out if FBA runs out, but I still have FBM readily available for the same ASIN? No, it does not. That's why we recommend having an FBA and an FBM uh, separate uh, listings for 
your products. If possible, but yeah, that's not a stock out. Yeah. Uh, you've got product available. Um, as long as it's shipping within a, uh, a readily available time, as long as, you know, you can't have FBM and then have four week ship window or something like that. Exactly. Uh, but as long as the shipping's good, um, your conversion obviously is going to go down because no prime badge, um, but uh, it's not a stock out. Abdullah Khan asks, what is the future of Amazon FBA? Let me channel the Amazon spirit guides. I was going to ask chat GPT this question. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, Abdullah, for real though, um, I expect Amazon FBA to continue growing. Um, this is this niche is becoming pretty well known. I've been starting to see TikToks about passive income. Um <laughs> Yeah, I say passive income. It's not passive income. I do not think Amazon is passive income at all. Um, this could easily be a full-time job for somebody, even if you're just managing your own account. So, um, but I do expect it to continue growing just because, not just because of like, um, you know, the var the virality of people being like, oh, passive income, blah, blah, blah. But just because, you know, like if sellers who are already on there, you know, like that's their bread and butter, they're going to continue to send in stuff and people are always going to buy from Amazon unless something really crazy happens, which I highly doubt that's going to happen in the next couple of years, like a competitor website or something. But yeah, um, future's looking good, if that's what you're asking. Chat, B Chat GPT is at capacity right now, so I can't ask it this question. No. <laughs> but uh, as Faye said, the uh, uh, market <laughs> continues to grow here. Uh, more and more products, more and more sellers. Uh, this isn't just for Amazon. This mm -hmm. is also uh, Walmart's growing. There's yeah. lots of online marketplaces. Uh, more people are shopping online. More people are um, shying away from, I mean, I, I don't know if you heard, at least around here, uh, all the Black Friday stores were, were you know, Target and, and Walmart and stuff like that were pretty empty uh, in the physical locations. So, yeah, just completely stocked out. Next. Abdullah Khan asks, can we rank old listing product with low demand? Yes. Like, yeah, you can rank any listing, even if there's not a lot of demand for it. Um, how high it or low, depending on how you're looking at the scale, how high or low it ranks, though, um, depends on that demand. So, yep, uh, you, you're going to have to spend uh, a lot more uh, money on uh, mm -hmm. getting it ranked as well through your BBC campaigns. Yes. Uh, ultimately, if it's a dead product, it's been dead a while. And it doesn't have a lot of reviews or has bad reviews. You might want to uh, think about just doing a relaunch. Yeah. Great. Healthy Hindu says, how to decide what should be the sourcing price for new FBA products? Is it right just to compare top 10 competitor selling price and try to source product at 25% the selling price as max for profit? Is there a part two to this one? Or is that okay? Well, we do have something, um, our sales forecast calculator. I think I've pulled it up a few times here. Um, get it. Uh, so share my screen. So we have this on our website. So this will kind of help you uh, figure out what you should um, price your products at. Um, so it's got like how Amazon as a partner, your referral fee, your fulfillment costs, it's got all of that um, that you can take into consideration whenever determining what the correct, or not correct, there's no right or wrong answer here, but what the um, best price to offer this at would be. Um, there's also um, a Google Sheet you can download actually that already has everything calculated here. So um, if you want to download that, I'll go ahead and post this in our chat um, just because this is a really helpful uh, tool in general. That. How to forecast sales is what that's called. But it's also it's called how to forecast sales, but it helps you uh, out with like a pricing model as well. So hope that is what you're looking for, healthy Hindu. <laughs> Next. Next. Right, Wish Upon says, oh, hell no, it's not passive income. Sorry for my language, but it's always so funny to hear Amazon being called passive income. I agree, Wish Upon. 
the other day, uh, somebody reached, like somebody I went to school with reached out to me on Facebook and they're like, Hey, um, I saw that you're in the Amazon space and I was looking into making some passive income and they did not like my answer. Whenever I said, this is not going to be passive income for you. Um, this is not a set and forget. They're like, Oh, but you just list the products. I'm like, no, you don't just list the products. Like it's not, if, if you literally, if, if anyone could buy something and sell it on Amazon, everybody would be selling on Amazon. We would all be rich. We would all have that passive income, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's hilarious, wish. All right, A. Shaw asks, hi, trying to update search terms on a variation and notice Amazon's asking for price and quantity of parent before allowing update to search terms. I thought the parent doesn't need price or quantity. Uh, it doesn't. Make sure on your line with um, where you've got your parentage information, make sure that nothing else was accidentally filled out that isn't also needed for a parent variation. Because sometimes if you fill out, for example, um, like the parent ASIN. So it's like sounds, the parent ASIN is there. Oh, sorry, it, sounds like he, it sounds like he triggered uh, the parent ASIN on uh, maybe shipping in an FBA shipment or something and Amazon oh. turned it into a physical um, oh, like an actual item instead of a parent. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. See, I would have to troubleshoot the flat file, but this is, I would check into this first. Before I've seen this before. And honestly, what we did, because um, we couldn't figure out why they're asking for quantity or price for a parent, yeah. we just deleted the parent and made it made a new parent and it fixed the issue. Yes. Um, if you don't want to mess with anything and you just want to change your search terms, uh, just do it, do it through a, a flat file. It'll go through since you can't save in the back end. Yeah. But I'm guessing if that parent is having an issue on the back end, uh, when you upload that flat file, uh, it's Ooh. going to, it won't trigger anything if the children, but if the parent is in that flat file, then, um, it, it'll tell you what error it is. Good question. Good whenever question. something weird right. happens like that with the yeah, whenever something weird happens like that, the parent, I just we just literally the fastest delete thing is just list. Yeah. delete the parent and make a new parent. It takes yeah. like five I assume minutes. that the uh, initial update came through the flat file, but yeah, um, yeah, definitely the easiest way with parentage is just delete and relist them. It's not really worth the hassle to fix them. All right, Simon Pearson asks: Does Amazon artificially limit accounts? Adding new products eats into current products. Aggressive PPC eats into organic. Big sales day eats into the next days, et cetera. Honestly, not that I've seen. So Amazon is mostly going to be um, search SEO driven and um, PPC driven. So any of those things that you just mentioned. So new products eating into current products. Aggressive PPC eating into organic sales or sales days. Etc. All that's going to be dependent on um, like your PPC and SEO. So if new products are eating into current products, you might want to take a look at, well, is there higher demand for the new product? What's my price on the new product versus like current product? Like there's a lot of factors to consider there, um, but I don't think it has anything to do with Amazon limiting accounts. Now they probably do in some respects limit accounts, but in these particular categories, I don't think so. What do you think, Jason? So there's a couple ways where they they do limit accounts. Um, one is obviously the initial FBA shipment. Yep. That... Um, another is an example we had earlier. Uh, one of our first questions was uh, the account level reserve, which was preventing the um, the the gentleman from buying new inventory. Mm -hmm. So in turn limiting the account and then there's one that's a i have no proof of yet but there's an account that we have that we know there is a ceiling um on sales and they have two products and every every week they sell forty thousand dollars no matter what we do and we have an active case open with Jeff at Amazon and it's all still pending and they're, they're, they, they, there's something wrong, but it's fairly clear when you look at the sales um, uh, trends, there's 40K, 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 40K every week. And, and it varies like 39,983, um, you know, uh, and it just doesn't make sense because this isn't 
uh, <laughs> it's really strange. And the other thing is the subscribe and save uh, subscriptions go up by like five to 600 each month. Yeah, so, so you know, like the data is there that this account is growing, but. So it's really, really, really bad. Uh, they, they basically have a throttle on the account is what we, we think. We just have no proof yet. Oh, I mean, not, we kind of have proof. We have no answer That's from concrete Amazon. Concrete proof. We have no answer from Amazon. And it's definitely a throttle because the number uh, of sales and payments per uh, per week is this been the same for like six months. So. Yep. Rosina says, if I want to relaunch an ASIN with a new ASIN, should I first remove the old ASIN FBA inventory to 3PL and then send back to Amazon for new ASIN? Or can the new inventory be transferred from one ASIN to another internally? So second part, no, it can't. Um, so I would recommend, um, so if you want to relaunch the ASIN, see if you can sell out of the inventory first. But if you want to relaunch, it sounds like you're just kind of ready to get the inventory back and get it going again. So yeah, create the removal order and then send back to Amazon once you have a new ASIN. Yep, they won't, um, they won't transfer ASINs. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, and Vendor Central, you can get it done. Uh, as long as it's not a lot. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, love Vendor Central for some reasons. Last three questions. All right, guys, let's make them the best questions I've ever questioned. Rinker said, how can I index keywords even if they are added in the listing content and back end as well? I targeted those keywords in my campaigns, even at high bids, but no impressions out there. The listing is active. I would check rankers to make sure that uh, you're targeting like the right stuff. So like right categories, uh, right search terms, um, high volume search terms, because um, there there are a few cases where there are relevant search terms, but only like five people a month are searching for it. So I would check out some of those things just to make sure. Um, but the most relevant thing, if you're not getting impressions, you want to make sure you're in the correct category, you're bidding high enough. Uh, you said you have high bids, so that might not be an issue, but depending on your category, bids can get really high. Um, but yeah, I would check category, um, advertising, targeting. Anything else to add, Jason? It takes a while to, to index uh, for mm -hmm. keywords sometimes. That is true, yeah. And but most importantly, patience. <laughs> just because you put in keywords in your back end, if you're not relevant to those keywords... Um, yes, that that can be an issue too. Absolutely, so you're not getting impressions. Uh, that kind of tells me that maybe you're not relevant to those keywords. Yeah, um, which is what I was getting at with like check your category and competitors and stuff. But like I like said, if if you mm -hmm. are highly relevant to the keywords and you're bidding on them and you're getting uh, uh, you're getting impressions there, and you're still not seeing it in your search query performance or Helium Ten after a couple weeks then it's usually uh, a category issue uh, the, you're, you're in the wrong subcategory or, or your, your category orphaned or something like that. Um, so I would also try targeting cause uh, I saw another question here, relevant keywords, search volume category is good. Try some uh, exact uh, long tail keywords as well um, that have good search volume. So instead of AirPods case, uh, pink AirPod case for women. Stuff like that. It says they're relevant. So. Yeah. They may be relevant to you, but are they relevant <laughs> to the customer? <laughs> think of I'm the, think like the customer. No. Uh, um, you, this is usually a relevancy or category issue. If you've, if you've already been, um, if they've been in the back end. And yeah, the if, you've already, copy, yeah um, if you've already dotted your I's and crossed your T's, then relevancy if you please i don't know sean yaw jr said if i launched a campaign and i'm not seeing any impressions yet for more than two days what does that mean also does your stock level affect how much amazon shows your ads your stock level does not affect how much amazon shows your ads but what does is your bidding so if you're not getting any impressions after two days first of all it's only been two days it might just be taken in a second but also check your bidding so this is similar to the last question also check your bidding check your keywords check your relevancy just to make sure all that's in order, all your ducks are in a row. I'm going to find out. There's one other thing you need to check for here. Um, and it's something. Thing. What's that? I said one last thing. 
to check. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me let me get into a, some stuff or get into the campaign here. Okay. Um. So, say this is your 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 campaign here. You're saying, oh no, I don't have any impressions. Well, this one doesn't have, have any impressions. Um. So, let's take a look at it. it says delivering, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, what's going on? Let's go into the ad. It says delivering here. Okay, so like Face said, well, maybe our bid is too low. We're not getting any impressions. Let's up our bid. But let's click on this. Double check that it says delivering here as well. Because oftentimes, especially on these wine glasses, they'll go ineligible. Oh, for, yeah, that is a great call out. For promoting alcohol or something stupid, like Amazon says. Um, and at this level, it'll say not delivering or ineligible. But yeah. on all those other levels up, it's saying it's delivering. And you're going, why aren't we getting impressions? I up my bid to $10. What happened? You know, uh, this is usually one of the issues as well. Uh, and then the ads, uh, the ad support is actually pretty good when this kind of stuff happens because they want you to spend money. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, open a ticket if none of that is applicable and they'll investigate. They'll probably tell you to remake the campaign. All right. Vinti Toy says, hello. After a jolly Christmas period, we've run out of stock and won't get any more for at least two weeks. Is there any value in closing the listing? And if so, will we still be able to receive reviews? So if that listing's closed, it's not going to index on Amazon at all. It's not going to show up. It's not going to show up as out of stock. It's just not going to be there. So with that being the case, you wouldn't be able to receive reviews while it's out. However, uh, once that product's back in and you reactivate that listing, everything's going to come back, except for the ranking, because, you know, it's been out of stock and closed. But, like, you'll get those reviews and everything. Yeah, you're... You're out of stock. Unfortunately, you've already made the <laughs> number one mistake on Amazon, but it happens. Unfortunately, yeah. Just, Can't leave the, it. just leave the listing there. Uh, don't do anything. Uh, keep keep it out of stock, and uh, uh, and uh, hopefully you get your inventory in faster than uh, two weeks. Fingers crossed. I know it's a rough time of the year to get stuff in, but yes, good question. All right. Uh, Abdullah Khan says, I'm a really big fan of you both and my Amazon guy. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Abdullah. You are awesome. Great. And that's our last question for today. Just but hold we on. Let's just hold on. I'm going to override Geraldine here. There's like two more here. Maz, how does Vine Voice products uh, are given it to the reviewers? Will these show as orders? Yeah, those, yes. they have a special badge that says um, Vine verified Vine reviewer. And, and and it will yeah. it'll say um, they're long. Oh geez, and oh, we get God. spammed at the very end. We get girl sixty nine really wants to get a hold of us. <laughs> yeah, um, it will show in your business reports as an order though, uh, if that's what you're asking. But it shows on the page as a Amazon Vine verified review or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jack Rex <laughs> says, can you change improve on product design and still keep the same ASIM with an updated brand and photos? Yes, of course. Uh, yes. All brands do this. This is, you know, packaging, redesign, whatever. Um, and all you need to do is make a new SKU on the same ASIN um, and send that into FBA, keep it inactive, sell out of the old version or recall the old version back to you, turn on the new version, make sure your ad campaigns are all connected to it. And it, it, it's, a, it's a packaging change, essentially. Uh, all good there. Uh, that, that is our last question. Now that one is our last question. Oh, Thank Facebook. you, Facebook user. Thank you. Um, we are, oh, well, Faith won't be here next week. I'm going to, I'm going to do the podcast. Um, uh, take uh, the day off, Jason. It depends. It, it, Stephen might tell me, uh, no, don't do it. You have to take the day off. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take the day off. You deserve it. Uh, but, um, we, uh, Stephen will be doing the, uh, the podcast on Thursday with the, uh, sellers. And um, if you need any, uh, any where's my screen? <laughs> if you need any Amazon one-on-one -on -one help, you know myamazonguy.com. Uh, you can go to our coaching page. You can do coaching calls with Stephen, myself, Francisco, uh, troubleshooting with Siobhan. and we have magschool.com with all of our courses. Uh, how much do these courses? Most of these courses cost. 
Dang, Jason, they're less than the cost of uh, DoorDash and Taco Bell. So, yeah. So, so do you want PPC? All kinds models? of different Jason? things you can learn on. You'll get a certi certification and um, all that good stuff. If you want to talk or get a free ASIN review from one of our um, lovely sales team, you can call here, get a proposal. They'll do a free review of your ASIN and tell you what you can do to improve your listing or how we can help you if you don't have the time and need peace of mind. We yeah. are Faith Denniston and Jason Master Mateo. This is the My Amazon Guy live podcast every Friday, Q&A, answer any and all Amazon questions. Faith, thank you so much. Anytime. Thank you so much, Faith. I'm Jason. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. And we will catch you later. <laughs> Everyone have a great weekend. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>